Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to Deb Chanel's 48th World, where we do the bold and the beautiful recaps and reviews. Yes, we're going to be going over the one that aired today, Monday, the 29th at 1.30 Eastern Standard Time, my time zone here in Atlanta, Georgia. Yes, let's get right on into it. Of course, you know, we're recapping off from Friday's episode, and Eric and Steffi are still begging Thomas to come back, and Thomas asked his dad, Rusty Duster, Ridge, as y'all know him, does he feel the same way? <laughs> and Ridge just look, he said nothing but like, oh, you're going to put me on the spot in front of everybody. Oh, okay, that's what you're really going to do. So he didn't really say too much, but he was like, yeah, you have, we need you, we did it or whatever. And Thomas looked at him like he's crazy. Anyway, move from there, we go to Saul. Saul is trying to convince Sally that they don't need Thomas. Thomas is just a, a, a distraction. We don't need him. I got some money saved. I can float us for a couple of weeks. <laughs> I'm like, so what a couple of weeks gonna do, baby? It's gonna fly by just like summer and winter, okay? You Saul's just too much. They need to find him another love interest or something. But anyway, Saul, you know, he's just real salty. He just don't like Thomas coming in on the white horse and, you know, taking charge and getting everybody back solidified. I'm like, honey, Saul, he taking care of your finances as well as um, <laughs> your love and your life, okay? You need to fall back. Okay, Saul said so they need to partner up together. He got a little money saved and a uh, hundred K, but it's a little song. I'm like, Saul, sit your butt down and just face it. Thomas is the better man and he's not snobbish and this, that and the third. He really wanted to help. He stepped in. He's really in love with Sally. So I'm sorry. I guess money, power and just a handsome built body of a man just, you know, put you to the back burner. <laughs> but if she was looking for intellect and nerdy and this, that and the third, you would fit her bill. But she's not looking for you, Saul. She's not checking for you, boo. Okay, then we go to Maya. Maya is showing the maid her uh, really, I would, I want to say adoptive because she, she wasn't adopted, but she was surrogately used uh, by letting her husband have a sperm and placed in one of her sister's eggs. So, I, I, whatever y'all want to see it, but she's showing the maid her, uh, her daughter uh, that was given to her by her sister. And she says, like, oh, she's so cute, this, that, and the third. I'm like, Ma, you going to get your butt home. You ain't going to have no daughter. <laughs> so, Nicole going to be done sold you up and put papers on you and want her daughter back, okay? But moving on from there, then we have Vivian and Nicole are watching Lizzie. And Mama Vivian is trying to console uh, Miss Cole that, you know, it's unfair. You're right, but, you know, hey, um, you did bring joy into the world and... She was kind of almost uh, feeling like that, um, I guess, Nicole and um, Maya need to share Lizzie. <laughs> like, Maya ain't talking about sharing. And Nicole certainly is not talking about sharing her child. The one that she had to bore all those pains or bear all those pains with childbirth and, and things of that nature. But, you know, like I said, Nicole needs to. She can't be an Indian giver. Ooh. So we move on for that situation. Then um, we have Maya. She um, is going around checking, you know, different people she can try to get hit to help watch Lizzie while she's done took a extended little vacation herself instead of being at home with her child like she said she wanted to be. And um, Maya calls her mom to let her know. Because uh, she watched Liz a few nights, a few days, until she can get back, you know, home. She tell her what she's involved in and how it will be definitely a great career booster for her image. Um, this, that, and third. And, you know, uh, excuse me, Vivian is understanding all of that. She's trying to be happy for her daughter, trying to do her fine. But then she's worried about her youngest daughter that is, you know, you know, she's just failing miserably in um, love and motherhood. And everything seems to be going her way. And she's kind of dropping hints that she was upset that she didn't tell her she was going out of town. And that she needed, you know, to basically have her uh, watching Lizzie while she was gone. So she was kind of hurt, you know. But she got uh, got over it real quick, fast, in a hurry. Because mothers, you know, we say we want to watch our grandkids. But, you know, depending on what we need to do, you know. 
excuse me, which deter which will determine whether or not we can actually do it. And the situation that Miss Vivian is in, she's torn between both her daughters. <laughs> so that's gonna be a hot pickle. Uh, if the writers have anything to do with it, for her upcoming uh, characters, part she's going to have to play as the dutiful mother, trying to be mothers to both children, and then her grandchild, which is stuck in the middle. But, honey, we all know that when Mr. Julius come in, it ain't going to be no question of where that baby should be going. <laughs> so I can't wait to see what the writers do in that facet. So then we go to... Um, Nicole takes the phone from her mother and pretty much she tries to act like a mother and chastise Maya, her older sister. And I'm like, girl, you're doing too much. You're running on emotions and it's not warranted. And even Maya picks up that Nicole has a little attitude in her voice, um, sort of like the attitude when Nicole first came to town and realized that, you know, Maya had turned herself into a female. Instead of being the male that she was born uh, to be. So, you know, she's going back in, in time trying to say, wait a minute now. Hold up. She kind of sounding like that person. And I, I'm not real comfortable <laughs> with her sounding that way with me over the phone. Uh, and then, of course, um, uh, Rick tries to tell her, you know, she's just being overprotective. You know, she's tired. She wants to see Lizzie. And, uh you know, they'll be going home shortly. And that Liz is in good hands. But, you know, you got uh, Nicole trying to run down the whole scenario. Like, why you ain't watching your child? This is not good parenting behavior. You said you wanted a child, but you're not here with her because I'm here with her. And, th and everybody else is holding on to her. What, why you ain't here? You trying to put the job of modeling uh, before your daughter? Da, 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 you know, just it's going on. And we all know where it's coming from. And Vivian looking at Nicole like she's crazy. Like, girl, are you really doing that at this time? So anyway, um, what's her name? She finally gets get the uh, phone back to, um, what did she? I can't remember how the, how the call ended, but Vivian was talking back to Nicole about, you know, her tone she had. Oh, you know, over the phone with her sister, so it is what it is. And then she, like I said, she was talking to Rick, meaning Maya, about the conversation she had that was weird with Nicole. She sounded weird, this, that, and the third. But you know, like I said, Rich, uh, Rick reassured her that it was nothing. The baby's fine. Nicole's fine. You know, just everybody tired, and he's just really ready to get to sexing and loving. So it just is what it is. We move on to Saul again. Saul saying he has a modest amount saved, and Saul tries to kiss Sally. But she opts out because he has his uh, eyes closed like this is his first time kissing somebody. So he don't know. He's hoping he would hit the lips. But she just turned away and let him hit her cheek <laughs> like a friend kiss. You know what I'm saying? And Graham walks in. She thinks she don't walk in on something. I'm like, Graham, slow, slow your roll. You already had your uh, granddaughter almost going to jail for something that you had spearheaded. So, you know, it's nothing going on between them. Except for in Saul's mind and only in Saul's mind. Okay, then Thomas tells his dad, you want me to choose between family and company and love and my happiness with the woman that I choose to love? And like, no, 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 no. We, we ain't saying that. At least that's what Eric and Steph was saying. But really, Rich was like, yeah, that's what I said when I said and that's what I meant when I meant it. Okay, but no. Nah. We go to commercial, we come back. We have Myers trying to explain to Nicole why she had to leave Lizzie for birth. Nicole is being very condescending, like I said. Nicole is just out of her damn mind is what it is. We move on to Saul. Saul tries to leave, but Sally tells Saul, thank you, but don't worry about them and Thomas' investment. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. I said, no, it's going to be okay. Because uh, Thomas got deep pockets. Very, very deep pockets. Okay. Then we have Ridge is, is responding to Thomas's questioning. He apologized somewhat to Thomas, but Eric and Stephanie are a little bit more reassuring uh, with their responses back to Thomas, but not Ridge. Okay. Then we have Thomas is perplexed with, uh, he's just really perplexed on the uh, tabling of the decision coming back to force the creation. He don't know if that's a good idea for him or not. Okay, even though he was wanting it because he was at home sulking about it and being melodramatic about it. But now we got it on board and it's put to him and he don't know what to do. Okay, so he goes on out. 
without telling the family whether he's going to be aboard, be back on board with them or not. We go to commercial. We come back from commercial. We have Maya talks to Rick about the conversation she was having with Nicole. She tells Rick Nicole tried to make her feel bad about being away from Liz. Then we have Nicole is trying to talk against Maya to her mom. Nicole noticed her mom is worried about her. But what about Zenday? And that's a very good question. Where the hell is Zenday? Shouldn't he be going to get uh with Nicole to uh search for a second opinion? I don't understand why he is not watching baby girl Liz. I don't understand. I really don't. Writers, clue me in, okay? Then we go to Riz and Steph. Steph is guessing what will Thomas do. He felt uh he left them. Without giving them an answer. I don't know where Eric went. I guess he went back home with Queen. Who knows? And it's just small talking going on between her and her dad. And uh, of course, Steph is wanting him back at all costs. Then we go to Thomas. Thomas goes over to talk with Sally about his meeting with his family. We go to commercial. We come back. We have Nicole thinks she's being too emotional. Like, you don't think, Nicole? Do You don't think, girl. Okay. Then her mom assures her her feelings are valid. She needs to have those talks, or those feelings come out so they can discuss them so she don't have to keep them all balled up and do some stupid stuff later on. But Nicole is just lashing out at Maya because of her not being able to have another child. That's it. Then Maya is picking up on Nicole's temperament and it's scaring her to pieces. All right. I'm like, you need to get your butt back home. <laughs> That's what you need to do, girl. But Neither, neither, neither here nor there, the outcome still may not be in your favor. But if we might have to get lawyers involved, this, that, and the third. But it's just going to be a hot, pissing mess, all right, in the forest of clan to come. Then we have Nicole still has Lizzie in her arms, and she's thinking the unthinkable, uh, trying to take Lizzie from her parental parents, you know, with no just cause. Only the cause being she cannot have another child and she knows her rights as a biological, as being the biological mom. But kind of sending, uh, if she definitely had papers in place, I'm sure Carter dotted his eyes and his uh, crossed his T's. So I don't know if uh, Maya would definitely have a leg to stand on. She'll do better, like her mother said. Share Lizzie. <laughs> Share her, okay? Then we have Smile Talk still going on with Sally and Thomas. And Sally's word that Thomas' family has made him uh, to come over there and pull the plug, the financial plug, and send them on their way. But quite the contrary. Thomas tells Sally that he wants to be partners with her in business. And he would, um, he's telling her he would love to be the lead designer, but he wants to be her business partner and take Spectra Fashions to another uh, high level that they've never seen before. And so of course, she's like jumping in his arms. He's spinning her around and everything is just like coming up roses. But you know, that's not how it's going to be. <laughs> that's not how it's going to be. But if Tam, um, I'm saying Tammy, if Tom is going to step out on the wild side, he better come with it and he better stay firmly planted. I mean, firmly planted over in Spectra Fashions because, I mean, it's just like the old versus the new. It's going to be quite interesting to um, see what takes place uh, thereafter this episode. Okay. But anyway, that was my take, guys, on The Bold and the Beautiful. Quite comical today, I tell you. Very comical. Uh, enjoyed the whole um, episode. So, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Yeah, I'll talk to you tomorrow for more Bold and the Beautiful, guys. Take care and blessings. Bye-bye.